Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing really good. I'm doing really good. So you're in Texas. I'm in Texas and I'm kind of losing my voice a little bit. I apologize. It may not be the optimum situation for an interview, but. <laughs> hey, look, you know, we, we, you know, we musicians are good at keeping going come what may, aren't we? There you go. <laughs> I was just having a look at your IMDB list. It's very impressive, you know. You've done a load of stuff, haven't you? Oh, I'm hustling every day, trying to get work and trying to keep going. And I have some new projects coming up that I'm super excited about. And some of them are just mind blowing. So um, I'm really, I think this is a good time to do the interview because next year, um, what I have lined up, um, I'm going to be really busy and I'm just so proud of everything that I learned through your course. So, um, I can't tell you how much, um, how much, how helpful it was, um, specifically, uh, the music editing stuff and the sound design stuff I'm using it every day. So, <laughs> I mean, you'd already done quite a lot of stuff before you came to us. Uh, so you were already out there. What made you decide that you needed a master's course like ours? Well, I'll tell you, um, I was working on one of, a project that a, it was a Disney project, and I was very excited about it. It was a big jump in my career. And when it was time to start recording some of this stuff, I realized that it wasn't going to happen in the United States. It was all going to happen at Air Lindhurst. And <laughs> I was just like, how is this possible? We have all of these great scoring stages, all of these great musicians. But we were in the middle of a musicians. Uh, they were they were they had a, um, a number of demonstrations and they had a bunch of um, they're basically having a contract dispute mm -hmm. and the prices were just making it impossible to do in the United States. And I kept seeing Prague and Air Lindhurst on all of these um, emails. And I was just like, wow, they're <laughs> doing something over there. All of these films were just hemorrhaging work. Hmm. They must be doing something right. So I need to learn from them. And I started looking up, I think it was your second year to do the, the Master of Arts. Mm -hmm. um, and I decided to, um, to, to request information and it turns out that y'all are working at Air Lindhurst. And, yeah. and I was just like, well, this is clearly the, the program that I need to be in. And um, it turns out that we're kind of the Wild West. We just, <laughs> we just kind of do everything differently all the time. And there's really no rhyme or reason to it. And you work with one director and one studio and they're doing things a certain way. And then you hop on a different project and they expect things to be delivered in a different way. And so what I've been doing, especially after taking the music editing course, is telling people, look, this is how they're doing it across the pond. We need to, we need to have file naming conventions that are not unique to Paramount or not unique to Skywalker. We need to all be using the same things because it would just speed the process up. Yeah. And slowly people are starting to, they're starting to use these methods and, um, Y'all just do things more efficiently. <laughs> <laughs> but it, I mean, it is a truly international business now. So I mean, I work in America, Absolutely. you work over here, you know, it's all kind of, so, so what, what, what did you learn, do you think? I mean, because obviously you write great music, you wrote great music before you came to us. What, what was the main takeaway, do you think, on our course? Um, the main takeaway was that I need to be challenging myself more. I need to reinvent myself more. I need to pay attention to what other composers are doing, to what my peers and my colleagues are doing more. And think space essentially puts you into a, a mixing bowl with a bunch of other people who are as hungry for work as you are. And you, you learn from each other and you're learning from people like Constantine Pope, who has all of these great ideas about, you know, pulses and drones and risers and shows you how that can be instrumental in uh, composition. For me, I was playing on a piano or a guitar. I didn't realize that I could be pulling sound design elements in from the dance music world. You know, I, I'm pretty much strictly an acoustic guy. Mm -hmm. And so um, I always thought of electronic music as something that they do in dance clubs. But those <laughs> risers, they yeah. really have this psychological impact. They just build things up and they make a, um, just a traditional composition sound very cinematic instantly 
and you don't even read, really need to know a whole lot about music and theory, do that. Hmm. You just have to be open and to different new ideas. I think space really exposes you to that kind of stuff. One of the things I'm really impressed with you is your total energy and your commitment to getting out there and selling yourself. So for those who are watching who want, want to follow in your footsteps and have your kind of level of success, what's, the, what's, the, what's your approach, what's your technique when it comes to marketing and selling? Um, I just try to work really hard and be a good person. And that's, that's really what it comes down to. Don't be a jerk. Um, be nice and do excellent work. Work your hardest. Be open to trying new things. And also, you're always going to get notes from a client. And that can, um, that can sometimes you know, rub your ego the wrong way. And you have to put that aside. You really just have to say, this person is coming from an, a different perspective and I need to be open to that and I can't take this personally. I have to, I have to go out there and I have to put myself out there. I have to um, be open to other ideas. I have to be open to collaboration. I have to go to film festivals. I need to go to universities, especially when other students, film students are putting themselves out there and you have to shake hands and meet yeah. them and, and, and find other people whose work um, resonates with you and eventually you have a group of uh, friends that um, happen to also be uh, co-workers and you're working on projects together and you're also hanging out, you're developing relationships and um, it's really just about building your network any way possible. And the rest, as long as you're, as long as you're working hard and you're just trying to be a good person and, and be ethical in, in, all, your, in all your dealings, then it, everything kind of takes care of itself. So how much of your networking is done online and how much do you actually go out there and meet people? I think personally it's all about showing up. Um, it's all about uh, going to festivals and um, going to universities. I do get a lot of emails um, and you, know, you, you, you respond to the emails, but it's really hard to find out what another person's taste is without meeting them in person, without watching a few films with them, without going to have a drink with them. So um, if you can do it face to face, even you know, through Skype or just talking um, in a different context outside of the project, that really informs your work. And so I would say it's a mixture. It's a mixture of online communication and, and just trying to find an opportunity. Luckily in the United States, I live right in the middle in Texas, so I can fly to New York or I can fly to LA and um, the airfare is relatively inexpensive. And if you're willing to, you know, gamble and spend a little bit of money on a, on a, on a ticket, spend a couple of days with the director, you might end up getting a job that turns into one of the best experiences in your life and you just kind of have to do it and put yourself out there. And how much of your work is local and how much do you have, um, have you been successful in finding work in LA and New York? Um, I almost work exclusively from my home and I built a little studio in my back room. Um, but when I fly to New York or LA, it's usually not to work. It's usually to um, kind of rub elbows to find out yeah. what they need in this project. It's to do spotting sessions. It's to go have dinner with people and to find out who they are and um, to take meetings. And so if you have an opportunity to go somewhere and you have 24 hours, book those meetings back to back, have lunch with people, go see films with people, um, try to network as much as possible and just make the most of your time there. And um, yeah, to me, that's what it's all about. So you you do quite a lot of commission work. You've also managed. You've been very successful in selling licensed music, haven't you? Yes, and you know what? I did not pursue that until after Think Space. I did not even realize that that's something that um, I could monetize my music that way. And it happened because of um, the library pitch course that we were taking. Um, I think the course, the, the, the specific instruction was to pitch a library that um, is needed in the market. And um, I noticed that there wasn't a lot of Latin music. I play accordion. And so I thought maybe I'll do some accordion and some, some requinto and some Latin music. And, um, and I did five or six songs and uh, sent it off. 
and I got my results back and and that was the end of it. Um, my grades were, I think they were pretty good for that one and I was excited, <laughs> but I happened to be on a totally different project and the editor, while we were working, um, someone came in and said, hey, are you done with that McDonald's spot? And she said, I'm, I'm just not finding any Latin music in the library. So I, I, uh, I, can't, I can't finish until we can find something that I can license. And I kind of said, you know, that's a funny thing. You should mention that because I have some on my hard drive right now that I finished for a class a while back. And we pulled it up and she dropped it in and it worked. And I just thought, I just, met, I just paid a month's worth of tuition. <laughs> and that's how that worked. <laughs> but you did, right you did it again, didn't you? You did it again quite recently. Yeah, I did it um, with, um, it, there was an Audi commercial. Um, they wanted some electronic stuff. That's not anything I'm interested or know how to do. But I had, um, I had written a few things for Constantine's um, um, sound design class. And when I was sitting there with an editor on an entirely different project, I said, hey, look at this stuff I've been messing with lately. And it was just sort of that mm, 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 sort of pulses and risers and things. And he was like, oh, I, I have a project that we could use this on. And boom, I paid another month worth of tuition. <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah, this, whole, this whole program kind of pays for itself, at least in my case it has. So 12 months after graduation, you paid off your fees in things you sold from the course. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a great investment. Well, I mean, what, it's also a great testament to your uh, talent, likability, and energy that you can get out there and you know, take the opportunities when they're presented to you, because a lot of people wait for them to, the opportunities to come to them. Absolutely, and you know, I'm on the Facebook page with the other uh, master's students, and on there I meet a lot of people that are, they just have such great attitudes, and they've become real friends, and we are starting to network. And I'm realizing that there's something growing here that we're all going to continue to work with each other. So beyond learning the skills and beyond, yeah, you know, learning how to apply these skills, it's actually a network within itself where I imagine that in the near future, we're going to be getting each other jobs. And um, I don't know personally an orchestrator. I do all my work myself. That's the level that I'm at right now. But I know that through ThinkSpace's Facebook page, I can... I can stay, you know, in contact on social media with the, these friends that I've made and they'll be able to help me out with orchestration. So I'm going to be able to get them jobs on some of these upcoming projects. I'm super excited about that. Uh, a lot of people would be surprised to hear that an online, uh, an online school like us has such a really amazingly strong sense of community. Yeah, it's... It's great. I, Lois is just the best person. She's amazing. And she just, you know, she cult has cultivated this group of friends and we goof off with each other. I've never even actually met any of them in person, but I know that if I have a question about logic that I can, um, I can send a message um, to our Facebook account and I'll get an answer pretty quick back. And I can tell you that you know, being in the United States, I have access to these great studios. Um, I have access um, to Skywalker Ranch, which I've been to a few times to, to mix and to their dub stage. And we were out there working on a project. Most of them use Pro Tools and I'm using Logic. And we're trying to figure out a way to make our OMFs and everything sync up. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, you know, I don't really know how to make this particular thing happen the way that y'all want it to happen. And they asked, you know, there might be a YouTube video you can look up. And I thought, I, I have a better, I have a better plan. I'm going to get on, I'm going to get on the Think Space Masters uh, Facebook page and I'm going to ask. And I immediately got an answer. We got everything sorted out. And I'm working with these, these guys at, at, at Skywalker Ranch are essentially Jedis, you know, actual <laughs> of sound. And we were stumped, and the Think Space social media helped us, walked us through it. So I think that that's a testament to what you guys are capable of. Fantastic. Well, look, Curtis, there we've seen people out there sitting on the fence, not sure whether to come and join us or not. What would, you know, final words, what would you say to them? Uh, just do it. I mean, you're investing in yourself. You're, 
investing in your dream? And why would you not do it if it pays for itself? <laughs> I, I just can't advocate for it anymore. Brilliant. And I want to say one other thing. Go I don't on. know if you remember this. This is, is a totally different topic. <laughs> but um, as you can tell from my voice, I have some throat problems. Um, halfway through my course, you may remember that I had a um, malignant melanoma on my yep. neck and I had to drop out for a little while. And um, this is the second time it's happened in my life. And it just happened to happen in the middle of my program. And I had to stop. And you guys were so amazing for giving me a little bit of time to uh, con convalesce and get better. And I was able to pick back up, get the steam rolling again. And, uh, and I really appreciate that. I don't know any other university that would allow you to halt your studies and then get back on track immediately because there's just so many kids they can't do that, kids, uh, yeah. um, students. <laughs> Y'all were able to do it's, that it's, I appreciate it. Uh, you are more than welcome. Um, studying online is, you know, it's complicated and people have complicated lives and it's just so important to be flexible. So many students say the most important. It's the reason why currently sitting here today, three years in, we have 100% retention. We have not lost a single student. Wow. And um, it, so everybody who started has graduated with an award, which, um, and it's a, you know, it's, a, it's a real testament to the students' stickability, but also that, you know, Tim and the rest of the team who are so good at working and supporting people and giving them the flexibility, you know, to, to make their life work um, around the, the course. And, you know, for people like you, there you go. That's exactly how it's supposed to work. And I'm really, really pleased that uh, it came good for you. And it clearly has. Absolutely. Wow, that's just Absolutely. brilliant. Absolutely great. Curtis, thank you so much for that. That was really inspiring. And I hope it'll inspire a whole load of people out there to, to go on and share some of your energy, for goodness sake. I don't know where you get it from. <laughs> there you go. That Off must be because the sun is shining. Yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs>